have belong to the Lord. Amen. That's what this next song is about. So if you got a moment that you just need to uh, maybe clap your hands, maybe pat your foot, maybe stomp your foot. Don't stomp your neighbor's foot. But just take a moment and think about the things that the Lord has blessed you with. I told Princess on the way to church this morning, I said, man, being in somebody else's church and realizing that it's 7 a.m. because they don't have a church building, they use a community center. At 7 a.m. on Sunday morning, the pastor and four or five men in the church have to go and set up a platform and set up chairs and set up musical instruments and set up microphones and set up sound systems and set up cameras to stream the service. I said, man, when I got back to my church, it gave me one more thing to be thankful for. And I'm so grateful that everything we have belongs to God.
still on? Okay. Um, a couple things. First, uh, we have a, a card from the Logsdon family. Dear church family, we want, let me put some glasses on, I'll be able to read this better. <laughs> there they are, it's words. We want to thank you for lending your support to us during such a challenging time in our life. Charlie's home going to service was beautiful and comforting during our grieving. We also enjoyed the chance of fellowship with Charlie's second family over a warm meal. It brings us great joy to see that you all care for and love Charlie as much as we did. He loved you all so dearly. While this time has been difficult and at times sorrowful, we have been able to endure because of our sustained faith in Jesus and because of family and friends like you. With gratitude, Deborah, Robert, Daniel, and the Lawson family. If you'll just continue to pray for God's peace upon that family. Also make note, we are having Bible class this Wednesday at 6.30. Dinner is served. Yeah. It's always delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Bible study is always delicious. Yes. <laughs> yes. This Saturday, which I believe is the 19th is Bella Vista singing at 3 p.m. Look, if I can go, <laughs> y'all know I can't sing. Y'all can go. So come on, join us at Bella Vista at 3 p.m. And you know Pickle's going to be there. Leanne loves the Bella Vista singing. <laughs> um, I am thrilled to announce that we have a theme for our mission conference this year. Now, these dates, you've got to write down. Saturday, March 26th, Sunday, March 27th. The 26th will be kind of an all-day thing, starting about 9 or 10 o'clock. So we'll have a continental breakfast, we'll have lunch, and we'll have several sessions throughout the day. The theme, now, y'all have seen the, the social media thing, where the lady's doing, holy spirit, activate. I can't get that out of my mind, because it's... <laughs> <laughs> this year's conference is Activate Your Gifts for Ministry. Amen. So come on, Holy Spirit, activate your yes. gifts for ministry. Yes. The mission of the conference is, and this is a mouthful, impacting the world around you through preparation that leads to passionate productivity in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Wow! What does that mean, Terry? I have no idea. Let me tell you what that means. <laughs> we will start with a discovery workshop to explore each of our individual spiritual gifts, our current roles, whether personal, work, church, ministry, neighborhood, and family. We will explore our personality, our passions, our hobbies and skills, and our talents. Well, that'll be great. Well, yeah, no, yeah. we are. And then we'll build off that to begin the foundation and framework of learning to live a life of fulfillment and not of frustration. Activating the gifts that are already within us to be who we are meant to be. Yes. It's not about doing something. It's about being who God wants us to be and who he made us to be. And from that stems a passionate ministry that we feel within ourselves from God. Did they give you clues about what this is about? All right. It's going to be an exciting time of exploration individually and as a body of Christ. Yes, so is. please, yes. make note. Yeah. And be there. Yes. This is about our ministry as a body of Christ. Yes. Our individual ministry is part of the corporate ministry. Yeah. We're a body. We're all part of that body. Yes. And we all need to be active in that body. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Jesus. I am a little bit excited about it. <laughs> all right. If our uh, ushers will come. Before we begin, can I just say, say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Welcome to being a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, we, uh, we come to you and we give back a portion of what you have given us for your glory and for your kingdom, Lord. Multiply it and use it for your glory. In the name of Jesus.
terrible storm that she's been going through. She was pronounced as having cancer of the tongue. Now she and I have sang together since we were two years old. And she played the piano and sang in church. And when they did the surgery, they had to remove her whole tongue. Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. But I serve a great God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And I know the Lord can heal her even of that. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And I also know that while she's recouping, I'm going to sing a little amen, louder. Amen, amen, amen.
the unchanging. You know, we change. We change all the time. But when Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, right. he is not going to change his mind. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Man, we just got to hold on. Just hold thank you, Jesus. on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, before we get into the Word, I want to give you a spiritual growth report. This is something that I, I do annually. It's a looking back, okay? It's a looking back over our shoulders at where we have been, okay? Thank you, Jesus. And normally it would happen a little earlier in the year than it is now, but um, things happen. It's a fact. Things happen. Thank you, Jesus. The spiritual growth report for 2022 is about addition and subtraction. Okay. Welcome to the new year, church family. We flew through 2021 like a bullet train on a straight track. There were so many things that we were still unclear about last January. Would the vaccine be effective against the COVID virus? Would the va vaccine be, be available to everyone? Would the vaccines cause you to grow horns or a tail? <laughs> As we moved through the first half of the year, we became so hopeful that uh, as, a, as a congregation, as a body, that the rollout of the vaccines would precipitate the return of our friends and our family, uh, our loved ones, to these very chairs. Unfortunately, for many, fear has proven more powerful than medicine, more powerful than faith. Apathy has proven to be more powerful than empathy. Thank you, Jesus. And inertia has proven more powerful than momentum. Once Jesus. again, Sir Isaac Newton has been proven correct. An object that is at rest tends to stay at rest. Yes, right. thank you, Jesus. But for us, here at the church at Asheville, we have found that Sir Isaac Newton did not stop there. Come on. He said that an object in motion yes. tends to yes. stay Yes! Hallelujah! Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And we have continued the momentum forward, and we picked up passengers along the way. Thank you, Jesus. God has brought us in contact with a stranger in Saudi Arabia who, through conversations, connected us with our princess, who has come and been a part of our yes. worship team. Thank you, Jesus. God showed Diane that Terry was right. <laughs> and this is where God had planted them. Amen, amen. It's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. They have been steadfast partners at the VRQ and at Bella Vista yes. and in reaching out to folks that need a word of faith spoken into their lives. God brought us Sid and Jeannie yes. and Wendy. Yes. He placed in love in Sid and Jeannie's heart for this congregation you, and also for, for Kevin and myself specifically. Thank and they you. have covered this church and particularly Woo. us with prayer that is so tangible. Thank you, Kevin. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I feel it's covering every day. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord has really just use these two couples. I feel like, you know, on, on the right and the left, y'all have been just such a blessing to me in stepping in in so many ways. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. But God didn't stop there because God brought us Jennifer. Jennifer's smile yes, Lord. and yes, her Lord. laugh yes. and yes. little things that she posts on Facebook. Yes. She's not a person to put herself out there, but she's an encouragement to me yes. all the time. And she's been a blessing to this church Thank family. You, Jesus. Thank he you. brought us TJ. Thank you, Jesus. And TJ's not able to be with us today because he's 
sick in his body and he's hurt in his body. He needs prayer this morning. Um, but he brought us TJ. And TJ has taught me so much because TJ came to us. He showed up on a Saturday, the only Saturday in months that there would be someone here at the church. And we were having a prayer meeting with a bunch of people from out of town. And he came in and he just sat down and took it all in. Yes. And for whatever reason, he wasn't scared. <laughs> And he came back the next day. And he told us, he said, I've been all over this town on Saturdays looking for a church. And y'all were here. And so he planted himself here. And he, the Lord has blessed him with a job and at the paper mill and all of these things. But TJ has taught me some things that are precious to me. TJ is homeless. And he taught me that a man that doesn't have a closet can clothe his friends. Amen. He has blessed me and Kevin. He blessed, he, this t-shirt is from TJ. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It says, he loved you at your darkest. When Kevin's car was broke down last fall, TJ, whose most valuable possession is his car, said, if you need to use my car, you can. I'm working all week anyway. You, just, you can take whatever I have is yours. And I said, God, help me to connect better. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us through the people that he gathers us together with. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God has, has poured into this church in such a powerful way. He's, he's used really strange circumstances at times. To move some of our church family to new mission fields. Mark and Laura Gibbs sold everything they had and moved to Portugal. Amen. They, you know, they're still, their ministry there is still unfolding, but Mark got to preach in their new home church last Sunday. <laughs> and God is already using them to support and uphold the, the, the ministry of that church. And uh he and Kevin have just been like on the phone planning mission, 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 mission. They're so exciting. That's not the only person, but last, last summer, Mr. Bill, who, who is my adopted grandfather, he got sick with COVID. He was put in the hospital. And then when he came out and God preserved him and said, no, no, I have a work for you yet to do. When he brought, out, brought him out of the hospital, he sent him to Valdez, North Carolina to live with his daughter, Retta, and her husband, Brian. And so there is a new mission for my friend and yours, Bill, because now on Sunday mornings, he's got his family with him joining us you, online. Thank and if they can't get to the service on Sunday morning, whenever they get to watch it, whenever he turns that thing on, somebody comes in there, sits down and says, hey, woo, we love you, Bill. We love you so much. God added to our church with, with precious little baby Harper that we dedicated last week. Yeah. He added to our ranks a little baby Briella that we haven't got to meet yet. But that Michelle and Forrest glow from having a new baby grandchild. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But we also lost our sweet brother, Charles White, just before Christmas. He went on to his reward. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. But in the midst of all of that, in a thousand, thousand ways, God delivered us, protected us, matured us, expanded us, and healed us. After an inordinate amount of time in the hospital, Tess came out. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. With almost all of her parts. Praise the Lord. And is now working full time again, both on her job. And working part-time with uh, keeping her little friend, uh, Georgia, and in filtering our blessings where she pours into the homeless population here in Asheville. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. After a week and a half in the hospital, Kevin pushed through, and the Lord has restored him back to his ministry of mentoring with and partnering with ministries around the world. Thank you, Jesus. 
There was just a minute there, just a moment in time, where we thought, is this it? But God is good. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And he says, no, we got some more work to do. You don't get your reward yet, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think that it is coincidence that it was about the time that Kevin came out of the hospital that that Sid and Jeannie were brought into our midst because um, I just don't think there are any things like coincidences. Just don't believe in coincidence. Thank you, Jesus. Karen has been feeding her neighbors with both physical food and the word. Clyde is calling and texting with encouraging words. Bridget is teaching and volunteering in various organizations all over town. Dave, Mindy, Joe, and Brenda have been hosting family and friends who need a home. Terry and Diane are doing Bible studies over the phone across state lines. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sid and Jeannie have continued hosting prayer meetings in their home. Princess is helping with Bible study at her school. DW is praying for people, laying hands on people and praying for them on her job. Tess is ministering blessings to the homeless. Joe and Pete have been organizing our potlucks and, and helping organize who's bringing what and who's cleaning up what. Forrest and Michelle, beautiful, bright, smiling, shining faces are the first ones we see when we come in to the sanctuary on Sundays. Always welcoming, always seeing what needs to be done. Our worship team has been gathering early on Sunday so that we can better come together to lift you, up Jesus. the name of Jesus. You, Jesus. The people of prayer have been gathering right here in this sanctuary at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings just to love on it before we get into the meat of the service. Just to welcome in the presence of the Lord. Just to allow an opportunity for our hearts to get in sync with His. Hallelujah. So that the first note that is played, we are on it. And we are completely sold out to what He's trying to do in this service. Thank you, Jesus. John, Karen, Deb, Bridget, Kevin, Mindy, and Jed have all blessed us in leading Bible class. And so, Sir Isaac Newton was right. His first law of motion continues to be borne out in this church. Yes, an object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion at a constant speed and in a straight line unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. And I want to tell you, church family, there have been many unbalanced forces at work over the last year. But there is an unbalanced force yeah. that is more powerful than anything that you can imagine. And that is the power of the Holy Ghost. For it is that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. And it is Thank that you. same spirit that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. Yes. It was that same spirit that kept us through the darkest times of losing our precious brothers, fathers, Thank you, Jesus. sisters, cousins. He kept us. He didn't allow those things to slow us down. But he is ever propelling us forward. And we're picking up steam. We're picking up steam. Now you don't know this yet. But what God is about to do is he's about to introduce us in 2022 to a time of swift transition. Thank you, Jesus. And with that, we will move into the Word of God, where we will see the vision cast for this church. In Romans chapter 12, Paul writes, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one in Christ, and every one members one of another. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, in Jesus' name, we want your sweet spirit to continue to move in this house because we want what you want. And we can't do anything without the power of your spirit in the midst of it. If you don't go, then we don't want to go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to receive your word, to let it find good ground, because it is a time of fruitfulness and production in your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, everyone say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. We are one body in Christ Jesus, and we are members one of another. The Word of God says that we all have gifts, talents, and abilities that are specifically to assist in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is huge. It stretches around the world. But within every church is everything that God needs in order to fulfill his perfect and complete will. In, in last year's spiritual growth and vision report, I said to you, the church is changing. We looked back at 2020 and saw that Tess and her beautiful family had been added to us. And we have you know, uh, Bryson and sometimes Kaiser when we can get him out of bed. Um, <laughs> that have been, become a part of us. And, and we, we acknowledge that what God was speaking into us was that we are one church, many generations. And that is not comfortable for us who have lived in an entire lifetime in an attractional church model. Whenever I go to conferences and I'm with a bunch of pastors, there's so many of them that are, you know, they're giving these praise reports of things and, you know, whatever. And every pastor wants to know, what is the trick to get people to come to church? What are you doing over there in Washington, D.C.? Well, what are you doing over there in Dallas? Tell me, how are things in Nashville? You know? Because they're interested. What's, what's going on? The Lord blessed me from early in my pastoral ministry that numbers are not actually important. The word going forth will find the heart that it needs to impact, and it will impact it. And if it's just me here with Kevin, then I know whatever the word is that the Lord has given me is for us. Amen. So it's taken a lot of stress off my shoulders, for sure. I'm really grateful for that. But it doesn't stop that stirring within my heart that says, oh, man, you know, are we ever going to get back to having the choir? Are we ever going to get, you know what? We do have a choir. Yeah. We just don't call it a choir. Amen. Amen. Are we ever going to get back to having a Sunday school department? It is Sunday. And every one of us are learning something. 
What God is doing is he's trying to get a hold of us and help us to realize, church at Asheville, you're not First Baptist. You aren't. You're not Elevation Church. That's not who you are. You're not. You're not Covenant Community. You're not The Rock. You're not even Harvest Home Assembly. That's not who you are. You are the church at Asheville. And the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God has planted in you are of a, a really special sort. All right. Now, the defeated enemy wants you to overlook that. He wants you to think, man, what we need is, what we need is, what we need is, we don't need anything. Right. We don't need anything but the power and the unction of the Spirit. Amen. Because what God has planted in each of you, and the reason he has planted you here, is because you know that the most important thing in discipleship is relationship. Amen. It's not about your ability to teach the word of God. You've learned that anybody can sit down at a table, read six verses, and say, well, let's talk about what we think about this. Just that easy. You can study the word of God. That's a Bible study. You've learned that all it takes is being present and filled with the Holy Ghost for people out of nowhere to walk up to you and say, my mom's in the hospital. Can you pray for her? Yes. Would you like me to tell you our specials today? <laughs> what God has planted in you is he's helped you to be here where the relationship that you have with one another and with Christ is the main thing. Right. The main thing. I can call Joe on the phone and say, Joe, I need you to help me pray about something. And he will answer the phone and he will say, what's going on? And he will pray with me. I could text Pete now that I have his real number. I've been texting a stranger for months. Who, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, doesn't answer. So. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. What, what, what the Lord is, is stirring in my heart is that this year is a year of transition. Because what's going to happen next year is going to blow your mind. Now, I know that what we want is for the Lord to fill us up wall to wall next month. But the Lord is got, He's still doing some things in us to prepare us for being open to receive that. And it was so exciting getting together, both with the Board of Trustees a couple weeks ago and then the Board of Elders this weekend, because they're just as excited as we are. I got to tell you something, Larry. This year is going to be the year where we roll out plans to make that a real balcony. Isn't that amazing? And there's going to be folks that say, well, we don't need a balcony. We still got empty chairs around here. I know, but next year we won't have any empty chairs. So we're going to have to meet, we're going to need space. And next winter, we're going to, we're going to build a balcony. that are not excited about that is Jed that knows he's the one that's going to be building the balcony. He's got that thing on his face that's like... He's already got plans laid. He's so amazing. He's already got pictures drawn with a straight edge. He's, he's already changed the plan six times. At least... He already knows what we got to do first and what we got to do last and how to minimally impact the sanctuary while we do it. Oh, yeah. We have got 
this thing happening in us where we start recognizing, wait a second, God is not trying to force me into the mold of being some other church. We don't have multicolored lights on the stage. We don't. We worship the Lord in the light and not in the dark. It's Some people do it different. You know? We don't have, uh, you know, uh, we don't have, we don't have praise dancers yet. You never know. We don't know. The Lord might have in store. We don't have people that are, you know, acting out skits, you know, to convey a special message. Not yet. I don't know what the Lord's put in your heart. What I do know is the Lord has placed in you this ability to connect with people. Right. And it's that ability to connect that moved Debbie's family to write a card to say thank you for being my dad's family. We see it. You did that by the power of the Spirit of God, by showing, hey, we're together, we're connected. You already have everything that God needs planted right inside of you in order for him to bring forth an amazing amount of fruit. In John chapter 15, Jesus is talking to his disciples about an uncomfortable subject. And in John 15 and 1, verses 1 and 2, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, or the gardener. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he prunes it. Man, it looks like you're going to get clipped no matter what. <laughs> if you're not bearing fruit, you get cut off and thrown away. If you're bearing fruit, you get pruned back. Why? That it may bring forth more fruit. All right. Church at Asheville, we are not an amputee with phantom limb syndrome. Come on. Amen. 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 We are whole. We are complete. God has placed in you everything we need for what he's going to do during this transition year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that you can't see it yet, but it's all right, because I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen young people that are tired of people catering to them with lies that they know are lies. They're tired of grown-ups catering to them, trying to make them more comfortable. And what they are looking for is someone to say, life is tough, and we have to take responsibility. Yes. Right. And we are in charge of our own walk with God. <clears throat> Mom and Daddy can't do it. Grandma and Granddaddy can't do it. Amen. There's going to be a day when you, as an individual, stand before God and give account. And the cool thing about that is, is that you get to decide what that relationship is going to be. Hallelujah. Nobody else can decide it for you. Hallelujah. We get to decide. Thank you, Jesus. So you think that maybe if there's a program, it would draw somebody back in. You think that if there was the right, man, if there was just the right kind of music, you know, or maybe just the right teacher, or just the right something. Man, we just had a powerful youth minister that could really connect. Do you know, the Bible says, that the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in Christ Jesus bodily. He had the worst staff ever. <laughs> he had 12 sketchy followers that some of them smelled of fish, 
Some of them had ink stained fingers. And none of them ever really seemed to understand what he was talking about. Because after every story, he had to expound it to his disciples. I love the way my Thompson chain does it. It says in the, every time they do that, it says the dullness of the disciples. That's what it says in the margin, the dullness of the disciples. Jesus didn't have a staff. He had the spirit. He had the same spirit. All right. That we have. Thank you, Jesus. And I am not going to bow under the pressure of an enemy that says, you're not good enough. Right. Have you ever heard those words, Tessa? Have you ever heard that little voice in your head say, you're not good enough. You're not doing enough. You're not enough. I think a lot of us have. Yeah. That's the devil. Of course we're not enough. Of course we're not enough. Man, if I had it all together, I'd be going to Elevation Church. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, that's right. That's not what God was looking for. He was looking for somebody who didn't have it all together and said, I'll make up the difference. Right. There's a lot of difference, Lord. The more there is of me, the better it'll be. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. called us to be right where we are right now. There's a reason that God puts you here in 2022. It's so great. It's so great. It's so great because we don't know what's going to happen. But you have shown yourselves to be willing to do just about anything. Y'all are the most bizarre people. <laughs> Y'all go to the most bizarre places. Let the most bizarre people into your home. You know, take on the most, you know, take on the most bizarre ministries. Y'all do that. And you don't do it like, you know, stressed out and thinking, man, I don't know if this is God. No, that's not who you are. This is awesome power of the Holy Ghost that directs your path and says, and now this is the direction we go one step. Here we go again, one more step. In the words of the documentary, Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> Put one step foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking across the floor. Put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking out the door. All in other right. words, just keep moving forward. Hang on to the Spirit of God that is propelling you. You do not have to lose momentum due to some unbalanced force coming against you. Amen. Because right. the force that is behind you, that is propelling you forward, that is greater, greater, greater than anything in the world. Amen, amen. And what God is working in you is this understanding, wait a second, God is not leading me into some ministry. I'm in it. He's not leading me into some connections. I have them. <laughs> I'm talking about not an attractional church. I'm talking about an engaged church. Right. Amen. Amen. You know, you can be attracted to a passing stranger. Everyone's being really still. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to nod, but I just thought of Jason Momoa. <laughs> and now we know three quarters of the congregation doesn't know who Jason Momoa is. <laughs> We're just like, no, we don't. <laughs> Attraction is brief. What attracts you to one thing can attract you away from it. But you see, it's that commitment of covenant, that commitment of engagement, you know, that promise of permanence that makes a difference. If people need certain things in a church that we don't have, 
then the Lord is going to take them to a church okay. that can provide those things. Yes, amen. Amen. Because there's a lot of churches out there that love Jesus. Right. Amen. But the, the people that the Lord brings here are coming here because you have what they need. Yes. All you right. do. It's not something that they can find across the street or on the other side of the county. It's only here. And they need that connection here. And the way that you engage with people is you engage with them where they are. Amen. God is not trying to move you, Joe, into an outreach ministry in downtown Asheville. It's not to say that he won't, but what he's doing in your life is he's saying, you have a chair and you have an opportunity. Every client that comes in, to listen to them. And you hear stories all day, every day. They come and they tell you things because you are their hairdresser. And you can tell whatever you, whatever you say at the beauty shop can be left at the beauty shop. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to seek out that ministry. That is your ministry. Yeah, yeah. DW, you don't have to wear a t-shirt that says, I got the Holy Ghost, I can pray for you. You don't have to do that. You're just walking around. You're just checking people out at Hamrick's. I'm going to go ahead and tell it all. <laughs> the security guard said, Deborah, are you a pastor? She said, No. He said, because I've been watching you on camera and I've been seeing you lay hands on people and pray for them. <laughs> and now you know we're not supposed to do that. But now, I'm a pastor and I know what you're doing and I just want you to know I'm not going to turn you in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> For all of you out there in the internet, thank you. Please do not talk to whoever runs the store. <laughs> the Lord doesn't have to take DW and, and put in her a burden to go to Walmart and pray for people. Or to go to Target and pray for people. He said, don't worry about it, Deb. Just clock in. I'll bring people to you. <laughs> right where she's at. She's engaging with people because that's where they're at and that's what they're doing. That's what's happening. You don't have to go to Florida to teach a Bible study, do you, Terry and Diane? You don't have to go to Tennessee to teach a Bible study. They said, we are not afraid of the phone. Thank you very much. <laughs> you get on the phone with kin folks in two different states and come together and have a Bible study Right where they're at. Right where you're at. That's what God is doing. Tessa, your job is a mission field. And the Lord is going to start opening up doors. And you're going to be like, oh, this is what Pastor was talking about. Yeah. And at first, it'll feel uncomfortable. Because you're like, ooh, I don't know about this. Because that's the way it always feels. But as you are obedient to the Spirit of the Lord, you're going to find over time that it becomes such a part of you that you can't imagine not whispering a prayer when that mean person walks by. You can't imagine not saying, yes, I'll pray for you right now. With that person that has a personal problem, personal struggle that they need prayer for. Thank you, Jesus. God is doing is absolute madness. 
It's so cool. It's so cool. Tom has placed you in a group of people that are able to share their testimonies with each other. And that's kind of cool. But you know, you're there for a real reason. And some of that reason is for them to pour into you. And some of that reason is for you to pour into them. Right, right. Every one of us, God is going to use in this year of transition. And maybe you, you just stay home all the time and you never see another human being except that person that you married. And I would say to you, I'm so sorry, but that is your mission field. <laughs> <laughs> That's your mission field. I'm trying to get her saved. <laughs> Maybe the only person that you see is your neighbor when you're out and they're raking leaves. Maybe you don't have a lot of social interaction, but I bet you still go to Ingalls. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. God is on the move at Ingalls. God is on the move all around us all the time. Thank you, Jesus. What is going to happen this year is a transition. It is a transformation. It is a moving from one thing into, an, into the next. What's coming next is going to be so powerful, but it's not going to be as precious is what you're moving into right now because the process ends up being sweeter than the destination. Because you can see the destination perhaps and you can see what you're aiming for. You know, when you when you head out to go to Dallas, Texas, you know where you're going. You have some idea how to get there. You know who you're supposed to see when you get there because that's why you're going. But what you don't know is what's going to happen along the way. And that is the sweetest things. That's where memories are made. That's where relationships are built. That's where things are strengthened in you. That's where your faith is tested and tried and not found wanting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're in a time of swift transition. Thank you, Jesus. Before we pray this morning, I want to tell you that God is He's stirring up He's stirring up some things in, in, in your heart as an individual. This church is returning to the foreign mission field. This church is not just sending money overseas. We're going. Missions team, you know, there's a reason you're on the missions team. If you don't have a passport, get one. Joe, you need to go with Brenda. God wants to do something in you, big guy. This might be the year that Honduras changes both of your lives. Mindy, you've been on hiatus too long. Doing what God called you to do, but now it's time to step out. To step outside of the comfort zone in a new way. We got stuff to do. The Lord is going to grow this congregation. And we have to grow in order to accommodate it. Because you see, we have this sweet intimacy right now. In which we know everybody's name. Uh -huh. Or a name that we know everybody by. <laughs> may not be their name, but we think it's their name. <laughs> but this time next year, there's going to be a lot of folks that you don't, you 
you're not clear, you're not sure what their name is, and you're going to have to learn that it's okay to not know everybody's name. You can love people and embrace people and make people feel welcome, whether they're sitting in your seat or sitting in your neighbor's seat. You're going to learn that, hey, you know what, I just think we need to get to church a little early because we don't know if we might have visitors and we want to get some prayer time in before people start walking in. So let's, you know what, let's get there a few minutes early so we can greet and help, help show people where the bathroom and the water fountain is. You think I'm making this stuff up, but let me tell you something. There's going to be a time in the next few weeks where you start realizing, oh, this is what pastor meant. Church is not, the church service is not necessarily for me. It's for me to accommodate they. Because you have a walk with God. You're going to talk to God later today. You're going to talk to God tomorrow. There's going to be people that come in that this is going to be the only time they hear him speak. Thank you, and he's Jesus. going to use you to create that atmosphere. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 3. This is the NIV version. Beginning in verse 16. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, we're being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. I love the old school version, though. In that, that last verse, it says, now the, spirit, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Church family, we are moving into a time of swift transition. Not of earth unmoved is going to be able to stand. There's a shaking that is going to come that is greater than any of the shaking that we felt in the last two years. People that's been waiting around for things to settle down are going to be disappointed because things are not going to settle. Things are being shaken, not just on this earth, but the word of God says, and in heaven. This is a universal thing. And God wants you right here for such a time as this. You know why? I'll tell you why, Mindy. Because you are not an admirer of Jesus, as so many Christians are. You are a disciple of Jesus. A disciple is someone who not just follows, but wants to imitate that. That's who I want to be like. I want to represent. I want to be the, the little anointed one that represents the anointed one. And that's what God is going to do in you this year in an even greater way. You've been stepping into it. You've been stepping into it. There's things that the Lord's been doing. Man, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Forrest and Michelle get up extra early on Sunday morning so they can go through the Bojangles drive thru to get something they don't even want. <laughs> Forrest and Michelle go through the Bojangles drive thru on Patton Avenue every Sunday morning to, to spend money, hard-earned money, 
on something that they do not want. I don't even know if they eat it. But they do it every Sunday morning because that's where Lexi and Jordan have to spend their Sunday mornings. They got no help in these restaurants. And so they go there so they can bless their granddaughters. Thank you, Jesus. So they understand that you can have all the youth revivals, you can have all the outreach that you want to have. Lexi and Jordan still going to have to be at work. They're not going to make it. They're at Bojangles working. Thank God they got a job. But that's grandparents that understand. You have to engage through relationship. So they get up early and they sit in line for something they don't want. And when they pull up, there's two precious girls hanging out the drive through window. They know Mimi's voice. Thank you, Jesus. You connect with people where they are. Thank you, Jesus. Would you bow your heads for a moment and just ask the Lord to stir up the vision of this swift transition within your heart? And to continue to open those doors and your eyes to see those doors in Jesus' name. In my heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice.
pastor is here if you need prayer. She's waiting on you. Thank you. 